welcome back on to some news from the international quarters. Well, news coming in. A volcano has erupted in southwestern Japan, sending columns of ash and air. Japan now has declared a state of emergency at the nuclear power facility. In fact, there are fears of a partial meltdown at two of Japan's nuclear reactors after yesterday's blast at one plant. According to Japanese government officials, while they cannot see inside the reactor to confirm whether there has indeed been a meltdown, they are assuming that there has been one and measures are being taken to address the problem. Officials have stressed that there are no indications yet of high levels of radiation in the environment. To avoid a major meltdown, operators are trying to cool down the reactors. They have injected seawater into the reactor to reduce both temperature and pressure inside the reactor. Japanese officials say that radiation levels are not dangerous. About 1,70,000 people have been ordered to evacuate the area, covering a radius of 20 kilometers around the plant in Fukushima. So what exactly is a meltdown? A meltdown refers to a critical collapse of a nuclear power plant's fuel systems and its ability to manage its temperatures. A meltdown can lead to the release of dangerous radioactive material outside the reactor. And in the event of a meltdown, there is a possibility of high temperature radioactive material mixing with water and becoming a superheated explosive mixture. If this rips through the steel container, there could be a catastrophic release of radioactivity into the atmosphere which could then affect areas even beyond Japan. And Japan's meteorological agency says the magnitude of Friday's earthquake that hit the Pacific coast of northeastern Japan was 9 instead of 8.8 .8 as announced earlier. The agency made the correction this morning after analyzing seismic waves and other data. The magnitude is equivalent to that of the 2004 earthquake of Sumatra and Indonesia that triggered massive tsunamis in the Indian Ocean. At least 1,700 people are estimated to have died in the Japan disaster and that number could potentially rise. And as relief and rescue workers fan out across the areas ravaged by the tsunami, four trains are still missing in the Sendai region. A ship carrying 100 people is also reported to be missing. Yet the true scale of destruction is still not known since washed out roads and shut airports have hindered across access to the area. More than 2,15,000 people are living in temporary shelters. 6 million households and more than 10% of the total in Japan are without electricity. And the search for family members continues as thousands of people are still missing across northeastern Japan. The port town of Sendai was one of the cities that bore the brunt of the tsunami that swallowed boats, homes, cars, trees and everything else. Smash cars and small airplanes were jumbled up against buildings near the local airport, several kilometers away from the shore. Dozens of countries have offered help. Aid has barely begun to trickle into many of the areas. <laughs> Well, definitely one of the worst earthquakes to have ravaged Japan, but 60 seconds made all the difference and saved millions of residents. This is because of the country's advanced warning system. This is how Japan saved itself from its darkest hour. Earlier on, what happened in our Sendai studio in Miyagi Prefecture, northern Japan. The world watched in horror as coastal areas, cities, villages in Japan simply crumbled. But despite the worst recorded quake in the country's history and the tsunami that followed, millions of Japanese were saved because of their early warning system, considered the best in the world. Lax and lax in Japan learnt about the massive earthquake just about one minute before they felt its violent shockwaves. The sophisticated alarm system is connected to a network of about 1,000 seismometers around the country which detect and analyze primary waves of quakes and issue warnings if the tremors are predicted to be powerful. An earthquake's primary waves travel faster than its secondary waves which are much more destructive. So while the alarm warning arrives just moments before the quake, it still gives people plenty of time to take cover. 
Yesterday, the warnings were also issued through the radio, television and via satellite data transmission systems, as well as on mobile phones and email services for special subscribers. In Tokyo, an early warning was flashed by public broadcaster NHK and private networks with loud bells interrupting normal broadcasting. The first big shock was felt about a minute later in the capital, Tokyo. The state-run agency implemented the early warning system in 2007 and to date has issued warnings 17 times, as Japan accounts for around 20% of the world's most powerful earthquakes. Well, just to remind our viewers, uh, Japan has declared a state of emergency at the nuclear power facility after a volcano erupted in southwestern Japan. And back to news from India, well, a day after a third-year engineering student was brutally killed while she was on her way to her college, Nagpur Corps is still clueless trying to find leads because the local residents are not cooperating. Barely 24 hours after college student Monica Kirnapuri was stabbed to death in Nagpur, Few eyewitnesses have come forward to help the police. Lack of public cooperation echoes the response to the Radhika Tanwar murder case in Delhi. Monica was murdered in broad daylight right outside her college. Till now, only one eyewitness has come forward and he too says he saw the killers only from a distance. When I was coming, that girl was behind her. She was behind her and that girl was behind her. She was behind her. She was behind her. She was behind her. She was behind her. The cops are still trying to find out clues from Monica's call records, trying to find why was she stabbed 10 times. Given that she was stabbed as many as 10 times, the police say it's possible the killer knew Monica and had a motive. Four police teams are working on the case but so far have no real headway. With Sanjay Tiwari in Nagpur, Prachi Zawde Karwag for NDTV. This is Headlines Now on NDTV Hindu. Coming up, Captain Cool, not pleased with his batsman, gives them a strong warning. Don't play from the crowd, said Sloan.